Man Waker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by patrons on Patreon. To find out more or to add your support for as little as a dollar a month, visit patreon.com slash manawaker. Welcome to Manawaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm C.B. Drogi. This week, Hush Honey by D.A. D'Amico. Jalisi grabbed the cold metal of the chain-link fence, flakes of rust crumbling away under her touch, rough like sandpaper. A bead of sweat tickled its way down her back. She pulled her hooded woolen coat closer, her breath coming in short, ragged gasps, and tried to adjust the sneaker she'd ruined while running from a group of the gooier ones. Above, the sky looked like lead from a spent bullet. Pins Market was the only place she could hope to find light bulbs. She used them so quickly now since the honey got to her grandma. The light helped slow the spread of the disease. Not much, but some. She stepped around a stalagmite of crusty yellow stone, a blob that had once been two people. It adhered to the building like a cocoon. She hadn't known them. She was new to the town, but at least the honey hadn't taken them alone. The plague had started sometime during the summer, people appearing on the streets with streaks of buttery-colored moisture growing on arms, on legs, anywhere it could be spread by human contact. The city had fallen into a hush. Human statues congealed in sludgy yellow heaps, like frozen bird droppings that grew thicker with momentum. That's when the school sent Jalisi upstate to live with her grandmother. She'd cried at first, But Grandma only smiled and said, Hush, honey. Things will be just fine. Grandma said the plague everyone called honey was God's way of slowing people down, checking the headlong rush as folks raced through their lives. Nobody really took time to live anymore. The honey fixed that, hushed the yelling and the noise. Hello? Jalisi's hesitant voice echoed through the murky display racks. She crept into the darkened store. Mr. Pin, the shriveled Cambodian man who'd smelled of lemongrass and always had time to talk, didn't answer. It's me, Jalisi. Please tell me you're still here. No answer. Jalisi's lips trembled. She thought the worst. Mr. Pin had been her only friend as the honey emptied the town. He'd told her about the light and had helped her when Grandma had taken ill. He was a good man. She found the light bulbs up front, three blue boxes that reminded her of egg cartons, twelve bulbs in all. They should last a while. A metallic clatter twanged from two aisles over, near the back of the store. She tensed, clutching her prize closer, and stepped back toward the open door. Is anyone there? With a sick feeling, Jalisi already knew the answer. The honey must have taken the old man. Something rough scraped across the wooden floor. Her breath caught as a glint of amber appeared through a gap in the household items aisle, moving with sluggish purpose. It slunk from the shadows in slow motion like some kind of deep sea creature. Oh, Mr. Pin! Jalisi spun, her worn sneaker snagged on a wedge of broken tile in the threshold. She careened into the wall, floundering. The boxes scattered. Crushed glass flew everywhere. She fell to her knees, quickly sorting through crumpled cardboard. Behind her, the squelching shuffle came closer. Her fingers flew through the debris, sharp glass stinging. Her heart pounded. She didn't want to turn. She knew what must be behind her, and she didn't want to think about it. She'd missed the talks and the little man's smiling face. Maybe when he'd thickened up some, she'd return. Jalisi found an unbroken bulb. She snatched it from the floor, twisting as she rolled away. Glass crunched behind her, but she didn't look back. This time, she took the long way around, avoiding the basketball court and the group of tawny wraiths loitering there. Ochre statues littered Grandma's house, clogging the front stairway and making a maze out of the hall. Jalisi stepped gingerly around them, unafraid as she climbed the back emergency stairs. The honey had grown too thick. These people wouldn't be going anywhere. I'm home. Deep shadows cut the small room into neat slices. 
bars of darkness that narrowed the closer they got to the flickering light. She was just in time. Her grandma sat in her rocker where Jalisi had left her, her face a jaundiced mask beneath the thin coating of honey. The lamp beside her sputtered, and it looked as if Grandma was winking at her. I could only get one, but I can go out for more soon. Jalisi hurried over and quickly changed the faulty bulb. Her grandma's head tilted sluggishly, as if the only trouble the old woman had was with her hearing. The slack expression on her dark face made it hard to believe she understood any of what Jalisi tried to do for her, and it made Jalisi feel even lonelier. Being close to Grandma made it the hardest to be alive. The old woman moved, flowing like a glacier as she tried to leave her chair. The honey hadn't grown too thick to nail her down yet. Jalisi took a step back. The lamp tottered. It tipped backward, grazing Grandma's arm. The honey sizzled. The old woman jerked. Her fingers flew up, brushing Jalisi just above her collarbone. Oh, Grandma! An ice-cold spasm shot through Jalisi's neck, spreading along her right arm. She slumped to the floor, tears already thickening. She'd tried so hard, struggled to keep living when there just wasn't anything left worth living for. I'm sorry. Her knees felt weak. All she wanted to do was curl up and cry. She wished she could hear her grandma's voice just once more, saying, Hush, honey. Everything will be just fine. That wouldn't happen again. Not now. Grandma's arms moved. They didn't seem as slow now. Jalisi pulled herself forward, falling into the old woman's embrace. If the honey was going to take her, there could be worse places to spend forever. This has been Hush Honey, written by D.A. D'Amico, and first appearing in Everyday Fiction. For more information about Manowaker Studios' other projects, including books and games, visit manowaker.com, which is also where you should go to learn more about the authors featured on this podcast or to get details about submitting a story. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. Manowaker Studios' director of Dice is Ben Baston. I'm C.B. Drogi. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at C.B.D.R.O.E.G.E. Thanks for listening.